<laughs> Conspiracy to commit any of these, attempt to commit any of these, an offense in another state that is similar to ours. <clears throat> Number four, if you have been convicted of a crime and you must send a copy to the uh, commission, when the final judgment comes in, you have 30 days to submit that to the commission. So if you have been convicted of a crime, you have 30 days to tell the commission. Failure to tell the commission is actually a violation too. So not only could they suspend your license for the crime that you committed, they could also add a couple more months because you didn't tell us you committed that crime. We found this out through some other means. Once again, let's get more redundant. Your interest in real estate, if you buy, sell, offer to buy, offer to sell, and you have an interest, you first must make your position known to the owner. If you have, uh, if you're acquiring is number one. If you're acquiring an interest, you have to. If you try to buy and sell and create a commission on the deal and you have an interest, you have to disclose it as well. So if you're going on title or if you're going to sell and receive a commission, then you also have to disclose that. Letter in. We are allowed to participate in the referral program. You must have a written agreement from your client. You actually have permission. If your client comes to you and says, hey, Raymond, I wanna buy a house in Florida. I'm like, okay, I will get you an agent in Florida, sign this document saying you agree that I can refer you. And then I would have a written agreement with the agent in Florida as well so that there's no mistake as to that client who brought it, what I'm gonna get paid. Letter O, if I appraise property, I must still follow the uniform standards of professional appraisal practice. We've touched on this, brokers can do appraisals. A little bit about continuing education. There is a council, a subcommittee of this subcommittee that deals with our education. They are called the Education Advisory Council. There are five members on it. They each serve for two years. If there's a vacancy, they just remove them or they refill it. They can be fired for cause. If they fail to show up for three or four meetings, they can actually be removed. They also select a chair and a vice chair, and they typically meet right before the real estate commission does because they are the ones that give the advice to the real estate commission about courses, sponsors of courses, instructors, all of these things that the commission has offloaded to this advisory council that deal with the school, the education, the instructors for that. This is all now undertaken by this advisory commission and they just go to the uh, commission and go, hey, we reviewed Real University's new course, we approved it. And the commission goes, okay, let's vote on it. All in favor, aye, aye and they take the commission, they take that advisory council's advice on accepting a course. Um, let's talk about the education. You have to do 12 hours of continuing ed every year. Those 12 hours can be a, any combination of these topics right here. I do not believe there's been ever been a question about name for the topics. They have to deal with antitrust, civil rights, ethics, appraising, property management, financing, any of those. Letter B, an attorney in good standing that is practicing law can actually use their legal credit 
for real estate so they don't have to double dip. I'm not sure how many an attorney have to do per year, but let's say they do 15 hours, they could use 12 of those as the 12 for their real estate license. Letter C, anybody that's been licensed since June the 30th of 2014, now during their first two years, must take and pass a 30 hour post licensing course. We've talked about that. That can be day one, day 765, or whatever it would be, all right? You are exempt from taking the 12 hours of continuing ed during those two years though. So in essence, you're trading off 24 for 30. So the first two years of your license, you will not take continuing ed you will take some time in that two years, that 30 hour post licensing course, okay? Then starting your third year, you would take CE from then on out. Course sponsor, we are, the school is called a sponsor. That's what they call us. So we are approved and provided, uh, approved by the commission because we provided all of this stuff. Uh, the curriculum, we had, they had to show our, see our school, all of this stuff. We have to limit the number of hours you can take in a 24 hour period. Like the maximum is eight hours a day that you can take in 24 hours. I have to provide you with a certificate at the end of every course. You will get the certificate for this course. I have to pay a fee for this course. And then if the commission changes their standards, I would have to adopt to them. I have to keep record of all of the CE that happens in my school for five years. My approval for my broker's course expires the December the 31st of every even numbered year. So it will expire at the end of this year. Crap, I gotta start getting that together. The commission may uh, inspect my records and they could seek approval. As a, an approved sponsor, I am not allowed to advertise or say that I am endorsed, recommended, I can only say I'm an approved provider. Uh, that's 13A. A person may advertise that they are approved by the commission and I fulfill the hours. I cannot advertise and say I am recommended or sponsored or, uh, what's the other word they like? Required, recommended anything that would show a favoritism. I can just say, yes, I've approved. <clears throat> when you make a renew your, uh, your license, when you, which we're getting ready to do, you will make an application to the state saying that you have complied with all of the required uh, continuing education. If you have been licensed less than one year, you may have a educational exemption. 15-2 doesn't actually work anymore because if you have been licensed for less than one year, you're not doing CE anyway, you're doing the 30 hour post broker course. If you have not complied with continuing ed, you can seek a waiver of continuing education. If you seek a waiver of continuing education due to a hardship that resulted from the following, you were actually in the military a substantial part of the period. That's why I told you earlier, the military has some exemptions. If you had an incapacitating illness that kept you from doing your continuing ed, or any other circumstance that the commission agrees to. If you also want to seek the waiver, you actually have to say on that waiver 
that you will not perform any activities until you get that continuing ed. Which makes sense. I'm in the military. I'm certainly not going to do active license while I'm overseas. If I've got an incapacitating illness, like I'm in a coma, I missed the CE deadline, I'm certainly also not going to practice. Uh, the commission can deny the renewal if you do not fill the requirements. So if you say, I want to renew my license, but I haven't done my CE, they might say, we're not, we're denying your renewal. The commission can adopt any rules necessary they want to, to implement this chapter. As a continuing education provider or instructor, I have to have an instructor's permit. All right, it's issued by the commission. B1 says it's three years in length. It will automatically expire, so I have to actually actively renew it. To be issued a permit, you must be a real estate broker or an attorney. And when you do four hours of continuing education each year, so the 12 hours that you do as an instructor, I have to do four of those 12 hours in the area of teaching. So four of my 12 have to be about teaching courses. If the permit expires and I fail to renew it, then I cannot continue teaching CE until I file a renewal application, pay the renewal fee, pay any late fees, anything like that. Any instructor approved before the July the 1st of 2013, which was me, you are exempted from the requirement. And once again, much like my broker's license, my instructor's license can be denied, suspended, revoked, any of those, based on failure to comply with any of these standards. Ta-da! Woo-hoo! Now comes the fun part, right? That, my friends, is the Indiana State Laws. What do you guys think? <laughs> exactly, Christina. Trust me, I, I don't enjoy them as much as you guys either. It is tough to, to make them interesting. It is tough to get it through because it's nothing but rule after rule after rule after rule. The only thing I keep thinking of every time I give these state laws is, gosh, I'm glad I got my license already. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, any questions? It has been my pleasure to do this with you. I thank you very much. You have a test tomorrow or Monday. All right. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. <laughs>